This is Alex. Could you make reasonable adjustments to include Alex and other young disabled people in your school? For this project, 41 schools across England shared their good practice in making reasonable adjustments. This section, Essential Viewing, introduces the reasonable adjustment duty. What you see are snapshots of what we found, nothing was staged. Since September 2002, Part 4 of the Disability Discrimination Act has required all schools to make reasonable adjustments. Reasonable adjustments ensure that disabled pupils in schools now and those who will attend in the future are not put at a substantial disadvantage compared to their non-disabled peers. The duty covers three main areas, admissions, education and associated services, and exclusions. In fact, everything that happens in and around school. All staff are required to comply with the reasonable adjustment duty, but ultimately the governors are the responsible body in maintained schools. Many schools already make reasonable adjustments to support disabled pupils. Often they're an extension of good practice. The definition of disability used in the Disability Discrimination Act includes a much greater range of impairments than is commonly thought. For example, pupils with learning difficulties, pupils on the autistic spectrum, and pupils with medical conditions can be disabled, where their impairment has a long-term substantial impact on their ability to carry out day-to-day -day activities. It's important to be aware that there are also disabled pupils who may not have a statement of special educational need, for example, pupils with chronic asthma or pupils with cancer. Recent government data shows that approximately 7% of pupils are disabled, and so it is likely that most classes include disabled pupils. The following film clips illustrate a wide diversity of reasonable adjustments made from very straightforward things to complex adjustments at individual, class and whole school level. All contain ideas for reasonable adjustments that can be made in your school. It's reception and Year One sports morning at Shelton Infants. Jake is in Year One. It's his first sports day. What reasonable adjustments did Paul, the PE coordinator, plan and make to support him? The first person that I talked to, really, in all of this was Jake himself. I went into his classroom and I said, I want to talk to you about sports day. And he said to me, oh, I know what you're going to say. You're going to say I can't do it. And I said, oh, no, no. That's not what I want to say at all. I want, I want to know what we can do. Um, and his face lit up, and from that moment on, he's been so excited about it. I then talked to his mum. His mum was very supportive and was able to suggest ways that we might be able to modify the activity so they're not quite so tiring. We looked in a staff meeting a few weeks ago at the Success for All DFES CD-ROM, looking at inclusive um, PE and sport for children in primary schools. And from that, I took some ideas. Paul also talked to the specialist disability support teacher in Derby and to Jake's physiotherapist. What other adjustments did Paul make as a result? She suggested that we try to organise the activities so that there weren't two physical challenges one after the other. At each activity I wanted as far as possible to make sure that Jake was doing a differentiated version of what everybody else was doing. So rather than having two activities next to each other that weren't related, I tried to make sure that if the other children were shooting at a target, then Jake was shooting at a target and so on. All of these parallel activities are reasonable adjustments as they identified and removed barriers and enabled Jake to take part successfully. All of the planning and ideas for activities will be used again by the school. I think the evidence is there that he did have a really good time. And the other children also learn a lot by working with Jake and seeing, seeing the activities that he's doing. So it's, it's not just Jake that benefits, it's all the children, I think. This Year 11 Higher Set Science class at Langdon School includes two pupils with visual impairments. Really it's down to the teacher organising themselves. When planning lessons I need to take into account they will not be able to visualise the board. So I need something for them that they will have hands on. So for example if I have a magnet in front and have the wire, although they can't see what will happen to the wire, they actually feel the vibrations moving up and down. So if the current is moving in one direction, why I would move in one direction. Is it vibrating more or less than last time? More. More. Excellent. Right, switch it off. Suleiman plans lessons well in advance to ensure that there's time for all coursework and materials to be made accessible for Buna, Sahad and other disabled students. 
A whole school adjustment is that pupil voice and peer support are encouraged and inform an ethos where difference is respected. It's, it's nice for everyone to be mixed together because uh, we can all equally be friends and people can help me, I can help other people. St Bridget's Primary in the small town of Egremont, Cumbria has 200 pupils, some with medical conditions. At St Bridget's, previous experience of including pupils with medical needs and a supportive ethos now means that all staff feel confident to volunteer for medical training. Children move around the school on a daily basis and if we only have one person trained, the chances where a, a fit or a, an attack of some kind takes place, that person may not be there. So all staff have access to the training and that's teaching, non-teaching, and dinner ladies as well. Twins, Callan and Ethan, are in year one. They both have epilepsy. I feel great about them all being trained because it doesn't matter where they are in the school, if anything goes wrong, they all know exactly where to go to. You know, and you know, you, you feel a lot safer. You, you feel like... Yeah, well, it was impossible to send the twins here without at least somebody trained in it. Yeah. And, uh, when we, we said that, when we first met with Mrs O'Reilly, she says, no problem, we'll train everybody. Yeah. Which is spot on. Mm. Over 20,000 young people have ME or chronic fatigue syndrome. Shelley developed ME in primary and missed a lot of schooling. Because obviously they couldn't see what was wrong with me. They didn't either believe or just didn't understand what I was going through. And for many years I didn't really have any friends. At William de Ferrers, Shelley feels well supported and has been involved in planning a number of reasonable adjustments, including a half timetable. But the half timetable that I have is a large, large improvement um, because I'm focusing on the important lessons and not missing out on as much education as what I was. Alistair attends St Clement's Primary. He has attention deficit disorder. Asperger syndrome and Tourette syndrome. Some of the reasonable adjustments made for Alistair include the support of a teaching assistant and differentiated work in class. As part of the school's differentiated behaviour strategy, staff have worked with Alistair's peers to help them understand and ignore his unpredictable outbursts. He gets so worried and anxious because he knows he does things that he shouldn't do and he knows he does things that he can't help doing. They've been incredibly good at talking to Alistair about the things that he finds helpful, bringing my ideas into school, getting advice from any health professionals who are involved. And really, it's, it's a team effort. He, he's involved in every decision. He's empowered. He, he, has, he has a timeout card that he can use. He has various options of things he can do. He's got a bag of snugglies, as he calls them, which are different types of fabric and textures that if he needs soothing in a certain way, he can use or rub or, or whatever. And it's all accepted and it's normal. And even the other children don't see it as different or peculiar. Alistair is coming out of school cheerful in the past he hasn't done. In the past he's come out of school a raging bull because he just felt so stressed he couldn't, couldn't control himself. But here he comes out happy. Lister Community School has resource provision for pupils with a hearing impairment and pupils with learning difficulties. Here some deaf pupils use sign language as their preferred means of communication. And a reasonable adjustment is that the school trains and deploys staff and communicators to work with them. There are four deaf pupils in this Year 8 maths class. Naz, the teacher, is working with the communicator. What reasonable adjustments does Naz make to ensure that the lesson is accessible for the deaf pupils? It's just making sure that I'm using lots of body language, making sure that um, everything is clear. And I actually think that having deaf pupils in the lesson probably makes the lesson better for all the other pupils because I'm that much clearer as a teacher. OK, so we have been looking at the plate buddy. David's in Year 8 at Fulford School. He has Down syndrome and learning difficulties. A reasonable adjustment is that Catherine, the class teacher, makes time to plan and differentiate the English work with a teaching assistant. The way that I do it is I plan in advance what I want to do, speak to the support assistant about it, and then together we will work to differentiate it. 
So it was about understanding from a text how emotion came out. So we gave him some pictures as clues to those emotions. So he was able to do the same as everybody else and to give the feedback at the same time as everyone else so that he's integrated within the class, but he's working at his level. David, how does Buddy feel if he sighs? Sad. He feels sad? Yeah. Could you do it for us? Can you show us a sigh? OK. Go on then. Excellent. Thank you. Well done. And I've got my first slide. Ooh, oh, sorry, the crack. And I go back to my work from yesterday. This morning, Year 3 at White House Juniors are studying poetry. Terry survived a house fire as a baby and has physical impairments and facial disfigurements as a result of the fire. When I was told she was going to come into my class, I was concerned about how she was going to be with the other children. Was I going to be more generous to her and there was all kinds of issues um, that came up. Things I did to help that, I went up to the infant school, talked to the infant teachers. I had meetings with a uh, head teacher and, and uh, Senko here to dis decide the best way forward and I got lots of ideas. Staff at White House also talked to Terry and have regular meetings with her dad about her needs. Another reasonable adjustment was that Changing Faces, an organisation which supports children and adults with facial disfigurements, was invited into the school to provide ideas and advice, including advice on how best to prevent name-calling and bullying. That helped me to address the problems I initially had. They said basically she needs to be treated like any other child and that did concern me and I thought, but she can't. I've had her in the class and I now know that is exactly true. She is treated like any other class member. If she misbehaves, she will be reminded she's not behaving appropriately like the other children. And I have no problem with that. So in the seven, eight weeks we've been here, I can see the progress we've made. And personally, as her teacher, I can see that I've progressed a long way. To encourage Terry's independence, Jo has asked her teaching assistant to step back from one-to-one -one support as this has happened, Terry's enthusiasm for school has increased. <laughs> Cleves Primary has resource provision for pupils with severe learning difficulties. Each year, Cleves makes two two-night residential visits with Year 4 pupils to Newham's Outdoor Activity Centre. Shaveen and Aziz are two of the disabled pupils on this trip, and they're both enjoying archery and canoeing with their peers. One reasonable adjustment made for the visit was detailed pre-planning by staff based on knowledge from previous visits to the centre. Another adjustment is that in the lead up to the trip, Katrina, the curriculum support teacher, and Aziz have been practising comfortable sitting positions for the canoe. In the nursery at Eccleston Mere, in addition to using sand and water, Staff use rice and pasta in the play trays so that children with allergic reactions can use these areas safely. This easy to implement reasonable adjustment also avoids the dangers of fine sand for children with tracheotomies. Catherine is in year nine at Brigshaw High School. She has severe learning difficulties. A straightforward reasonable adjustment which supports Catherine is this visual timetable attached to her school bag so that it doesn't get lost. Yeah, yeah do you like it? Yeah. Good, that's lovely. This year five PE class at Coatford Juniors is working on turning and levels. The class includes four disabled pupils from Coatford and five disabled pupils on outreach from Grangewood, a co-located special school for pupils with severe learning difficulties. The Coatford teacher takes responsibility for the class and has planned activities with advice from Grangewood staff so that all pupils can take part. A reasonable adjustment made for Emily is that her physiotherapy is timetabled into the PE lesson so that she does not miss any time from other lessons. We're sitting fantastically, it's a huge progress. So yeah, if people do things well, you sort out problems, then Katie attends Bath Eastern Primary. She has severe learning difficulties and when Katie started primary she had no spoken language. One of a programme of strategies to develop Katie's and other pupils' social language skills are these visits to the local shops. The timetabling of a teaching assistant to lead them and liaison with the shop owner are reasonable adjustments. No, it's not glass, it's metal. 
That's Stalin. Stalin. Oh, yes. Angry. Why crack? Uh, because it's old paint. This came from France. It came from a fairground. Two again. again. I'm no doubt. Katie, what do you need to say to John today? It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. See you again. At Billsley Primary, the school's Special Educational Needs Coordinator organises regular training for staff and works with many outside agencies to develop reasonable adjustments to support disabled pupils. I think there's a lot of very good practice that's come through special needs teaching that's now being generalised and, and becoming now widely used for all sorts of children. We use the visual timetables in reception, for instance. Those were ideas that came to us from specialists who work with children with autism. And of course, all the children are now benefiting from that. As schools become experienced at making reasonable adjustments, adjustments often become incorporated into whole school practice. One whole school activity at Cottingley Primary to support literacy throughout the school is this themed learning week. Each year, staff transform the school hall into a fantastic environment. Last year it was the ocean, this year it's space. This year's galaxy contains materials relevant to all areas of the curriculum and all pupils visit space during a week of activities. Cottingley has resource provision for pupils with a hearing impairment and deep in space, just like in class, Deaf pupils are supported by communicators. A reasonable adjustment is that all the communicators have had training in specific sign language to support the space curriculum. These themed weeks were set up because staff felt that many pupils at the school had a limited experience of language, and they've proven to be a fun way of enriching vocabulary and enhancing literacy. This whole school activity has benefited all pupils, and especially pupils with communication impairments. At Ian Mercado High School, for pupils with behavioural, emotional and social difficulties, the head and staff have recently radically altered the curriculum and ethos and brought the school out of special measures. The school's new My Life curriculum includes study for GCSEs alongside vocational courses and is designed to be engaging and relevant to pupils' lives and to their futures. Why was this whole school reasonable adjustment made? I just thought, well, these are young people with a disability. It may not be as obvious as somebody who's in a wheelchair, but we don't, with somebody in a wheelchair, take them to the classroom and say, oh, you can't get through the door, we'll tip you out and push you through, which is exactly what was happening with these young people. And what we needed to do wasn't to make the door wider, but make it wider in terms of the curriculum so that it became more relevant. The new curriculum crosses all subjects. Here, after a circus skills workshop and after risk assessments, pupils are using stilts that they have designed and made. Froome Community College is a dyslexia-friendly school and makes many adjustments to support disabled pupils. One adjustment is that pupils with dyslexia may have extra time allocated where appropriate for classwork and examinations. Another adjustment is that staff teach pupils how to plan and use this time effectively. This screen form um, shows that you know, I can show this to a teacher and I can get 25% more time. Ben also finds his school journal very helpful in structuring his school work. I find that it's a, it's a new best friend for me. Don't feel alone. It, it just tells me everything that I've got to do, all the homeworks when they've got to be due in. My mum can write notes in here. Glossopdale Community College has 1,900 pupils, including over 80 pupils with statements of special educational need. Glossopdale is a split-site school with 200 teachers and teaching assistants. Timetabling for staff curriculum planning meetings was difficult. In order to meet the needs of all pupils, a whole school timetable adjustment was made. Pupils now leave school earlier on a Friday and staff use this time to meet together as a whole staff or in smaller groups to plan the curriculum, to differentiate work and to plan reasonable adjustments for disabled pupils.
The inclusive ethos and high expectations of all pupils at the school provides a supportive framework for staff to make reasonable adjustments in the classroom. Matthew's in year eight. He has physical and speech impairments. Matthew loves French and in this French lesson he is supported by a teaching assistant who scribes for him. Working with peers is encouraged and one of the adjustments to support Matthew and other students is the use of visual materials and games. Some of the language card games used have been adjusted so that Matthew has fewer cards and therefore has enough time to complete the work. Some disabled pupils with challenging behaviour find it difficult to stay on task. At Brigshaw, one reasonable adjustment made for Calden was the regular support of a learning mentor who provided him with a range of coping strategies. When I was in like, year seven and eight, I was just getting into trouble like, all the time and just being malfit at teachers and disruptive and not doing homework. I was very pleased when he got onto the mentoring scheme because I really thought he was going to end up getting chucked out of school. How did the mentoring help? Instead of being like a teacher and telling you off for something, they'd, they'd understand you and then instead of saying you need to do this, you're saying you can, you can do this, you, want, you should want to be doing this, it's not you, sh you must do this. They're giving you options, targets to, to meet instead of just bossing you about. As well as giving you an option, they influence you to make the proper, the, the right choice by saying you can do that, but you're just letting yourself down, you're letting me down, you're letting your mum down and then you'd know that you, you shouldn't be doing that, so you've got to do the right, right thing. At Brigshaw, learning mentors work closely with students and their parents. I didn't think we were going to get there sometimes, but it was very nice in the end when he came out with the nine GCSEs. I've already been like to a few younger lads who I know. I've already said to them, it really did help me if I were to do it. And I've, made, I've picked it up a bit to them just to persuade them to get onto it, but once they're there, then they'll realise for themselves that it's all right. Langdon School is a large comprehensive where staff have been making reasonable adjustments to support disabled pupils with a wide range of needs for a number of years. Central to the school's approach is that staff regularly review practice, build on what works and change what doesn't. What advice would the head give to other schools on making reasonable adjustments? I think what they've got to do is relish it and see it as part of it's not something separate, it's about what they do already. They already try to make their service better for all the young people that they've got across the school. And this is extending it to another group of young people and using the skills that they've got and, and honing them further. I think for any school there are always starting points, there are already things that they're already doing that they may not realise they're doing if they, if they just sort of reflect on it where they're particularly strong. So I think it's about building on the strengths making sure that the first steps that they take are successful ones, so the staff have a feel of success. Being very open and involving the young people themselves in the, in the process, I think is really important. I encourage people to express their concerns, but then to have solutions to that, to be looking at positive solutions, because schools like my own can show that it has benefited all young people. So have some confidence that it's going to benefit the whole of the school ethos and really strengthen the school. Making reasonable adjustments is a continuously developing process. It usually moves from adjustments made to meet the needs of individual disabled pupils to the incorporation of expertise gained into whole school policies and practices. The schools we visited are all making successful reasonable adjustments to support disabled pupils. They found that in identifying and removing barriers to learning, the following factors are important. A can-do attitude, a welcoming and supportive ethos, forward planning, strong leadership, ongoing consultation with pupils and parents, effective staff training, good working relationships with outside agencies, and regular review and evaluation of adjustments. Is your school making reasonable adjustments? Ask yourself the question, what are we doing to find solutions to remove the barriers that disabled pupils face in school? 
The material on all three DVDs will provide you with many more transferable ideas to use in your school.